This is Mrs. Mafuji, and right now we're going to consider gases, liquids, and solids, the three states of matter. This PowerPoint video goes along with the reading strategy that you did using your textbook in Chapter 13. So why don't you get that reading strategy right now and take notes on the right side of your reading strategy. The kinetic molecular theory of matter is used to explain the behaviors and characteristics of all phases of matter. The word kinetic refers to motion. Kinetic energy, then, is the energy a sample of matter has because of its motion, or the motion of the particles that make it up. According to the kinetic theory, all matter consists of tiny particles that are in constant motion. Well now, let's look at how the kinetic molecular theory can be used to describe gases. Gases have some interesting characteristics that have fascinated scientists for more than 300 years. The first gas to be studied was air. It was a long time, however, before it was discovered that air was actually a mixture of particles rather than a single gas. Although air is a mixture of several different gases, it behaves much the same as any single gas. Now it's important to note that gas particles can be monoatomic, such as neon, argon, krypton, and helium. Monoatomic refers to one atom gases. These are your noble gases. Now we've already looked at some diatomic gases, di two atomic, two atom gases, such as hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. Gas particles can also be polyatomic, many atom gases, such as methane, CH4, carbon dioxide, CO2, and ammonia, NH3. Gases can be substances, that means elements or compounds, or gases can be a mixture of elements and compounds. All gases exhibit the same properties, whether they're elements, compounds, or a mixture of gases. All gases assume the volume and shape of their containers. Gases completely expand to fill their containers. Gases are in random, constant, straight-line motion. Gases have mass. They have low densities. And they diffuse from regions of high concentration to low concentration. In other words, if I open up a bottle of perfume that's volatile, that means it easily becomes a gas, it will travel to the other side of the room and eventually you'll smell it. Gases are easy to compress and expand. Gases exert pressure. The kinetic molecular theory, KMT for short, is used to explain the behaviors and characteristics of gases. In the theory, number one, we assume that the volume of the individual gas particles is insignificant compared to the volume occupied by the gas. This means there are great distances between the gas particles in which there is a lot of empty space. 
This empty space allows gases to be compressed. Number two, we assume that gases are composed of small particles that are in random, constant, straight line motion. Number three, molecular collisions are perfectly elastic. That means when the gas particles strike each other or strike the wall of the container, there is no loss of energy. Energy is transferred, but not lost. Number four. The next assumption is that there are no attractive or repulsive forces between gas particles. And number five, that the average kinetic energy of the gas particles is directly related to the absolute temperature. We're going to look at what absolute temperature means later on in this video. The nature of gas is gas pressure. Gas pressure is caused by the random motion of particles and their collisions with a surface. In other words, when the gas particles hit the walls of their container, they exert a pressure. As temperature increases, the gas pressure increases. That's because as temperature increases, the kinetic energy increases, which means that the gas particles are moving more fast, and that means that they're going to be hitting the walls of the container more often and more strongly. As the volume of the container decreases, gas pressure increases. That's because you're squeezing the gas particles into a smaller volume, which means those gas particles are going to hit the walls of the container more often. And lastly, as the number of moles of gas increases, the gas pressure increases. This makes sense because you're adding more particles to the container which means that there are going to be more collisions. Gas pressure depends on how hard which is proportional on the mass and the speed of the particles and how often the molecules strike the wall. How hard and how often the gas particles hit the walls of the container. Standard pressure is defined as one atmosphere, 760 millimeters of mercury, 760 tor, and 101.3 kilopascals. There are four different units of pressure that you will encounter in this class. There are four different units because I don't know why, but different scientists use different units. Chemists prefer to use atmospheres, while meteorologists use millimeters of mercury, and physicists tend to use kilopascals. Since those are all units of standard pressure, it makes sense that one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equal to 760 tor, which is equal to 101.3 kilopascals. These relationships can help you create conversion factors. Kinetic energy and temperature. Temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the particles that make up a substance. 
In other words, temperature is a measure of the average speed. Underline the word average, the average speed at which the particles are moving. This diagram is similar to the one you saw in your textbook. It shows that as temperature increases, which is represented by the blue dotted line, the average molecular speed increases. Let's now consider kinetic energy and temperature as it relates to gases. The Kelvin temperature scale, or the absolute temperature scale, given by the units Kelvins, symbolized with a capital K, is another unit of temperature in which absolute zero, or zero K, is the lowest possible temperature. Absolute zero, or zero K, is when kinetic energy is zero and all motion has stopped. To convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin, all you have to do is add 273 to it. Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273. There are no negative temperatures on the Kelvin scale.